mau a he honore he kororia ki te atua he mau ngā rongo ki te whenua he hakaaro pai ki ngā tangata katoa Amini. Tēnā i te whānau, um, no mai hoki mai, as always, it's a great pleasure to bring you into our space of practice foundations and delve into some of these complex corridors floating out there and really delve in, even if for a short time, into um, all the dialogue and corridor and what we're grappling with and the complexities of the mahi that we do there. Um, with saying that, um, so my name is Donna, I hail from the north, and joining me today, most importantly, I have, um, we also have them named in there, there's Lee Ryan, who's in help desk, so if you're having any issues, we have Lee in there, and I have my beautiful Tita um, Jess, that's also there on hand to up there, and with the three of us holding the space to make sure um, we have an awesome time together, though a short time. It's my absolute Pleasure to um, introduce our Pai Kōrero that's joining us today. E te tū ngā me e eruera, a ngā mihi ki a koe hoa. There's so much amazing things that I could share about our Pai Kōrero today, but you know what? I'm going to stop here and allow um, his awesomeness and amazingness shine through through his Kōrero and the mahi that he, that he does. Nā reira e eru kei a koe te wā e hoa. Uh, tēnā tātou e te whānau, uh, nei anō te mihi o Aura ki mauka, uh, ka pāoro i ka pari ka rakarako ka tūpuna, uh, ki tau raua ki o koutou mauka whakahi o koutou wai a te rere, uh, ka whare katoa o koutou tūpuna, uh, kei ngā ihi, ngā wehi, ka mana, uh, nei anō a ku mihi ki a koutou katoa, uh, ko iru ira tārena toko ingoa, uh, mai ka iwi o, o ngai tahu, uh, ngāti prou te whānau apanui, um, and uh, just throwing out the Fana Apunui um, Faka Papa, of course, being uh, the greatest Kabahaka uh, group in the world. So, um, yeah. Mihi Kia Koto. I'm just going to uh, share screen, uh, just briefly intro, and then uh, kind of throw to uh, what we're going to talk about. Um, here we go. Oh, so Tina Tato. Um, going to talk a bit about uh, Indigenous social innovation. So um, my name is Iruwira Tārena. I work for uh, Tokuna Taraki, which is an Indigenous uh, social innovation lab housed under the mana of Ngaitahu. So we're basically uh, what TSI is to council where that quirky uh, um, lab space uh, that sits under uh, our iwi Ngaitahu. And uh, really how we came about to social innovation uh, um, we've been looking at shifting the dials since settlement, but of course, um, yeah, we've been doing lots of uh, projects and programs, and eventually we um, settled on uh, social innovation, which I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how we got there uh, soon. But just a little bit of a wheedle. Uh, um, so really, when we think about innovation, Often from our experience, things like co-design just replaces consultation and that we are still in a position of being decision takers, not makers. And so what's really interesting for us as an iwi is to think, well, what is the opportunity that iwi-led innovation, that tatiriti-led innovation offers us in our mahi? And so as an iwi, we're trying to figure out, well, what does iwi-led transformation look like? Uh, and once we figure that out, then we'll probably be in a better position to sit down with our Tangata Tiriti partners who are actually all lining up ready to go and think about well what does Tiriti lead innovation look like in our mahi. But um kwera taku wero, uh foko hoki terako kororo uh kia kwe dona. Um so yeah, looking forward to having a bit of a jam and that's a bit of a initial wero a um, motehini ngaro i te nei. From our group, um we talked a lot about um the trust that comes um, from uh, these relationships, trust going both ways. So trust from um, Māori or um, mana whenua, tangata whenua, from a lot of intergenerational hurt. Uh, and then the other way is trusting that Māori know what's best um, and letting go of that power and control. Thank you for sharing. Um, do we have um, one more kai that we'll, that we'll, would like to koha out some of the whakaro or thoughts that came from their ropu? And again, do not be whakama to drop any thoughts if, um, into our chat. 
I can share a little bit of our Kuriru Kibra Koto. Um, we kind of similar, we talked a lot about like the importance of relationships, um, but the importance because of the imbalance of power, the historical imbalance of power, the challenges of holding those ongoing relationships and managing the expectations of what comes out of them on both sides. So, you know, the need for us to really learn about that history and and dedicate that that time and that energy and that aroha to those relationships. Oh, nga mihi kia koe, hoa lovely feedback, kei te mihi ati kia koe. What I'm going to do now is hand it over um, back to us, think like korero, kia ora ra eru. Okay, so our, our, our name comes from our creation traditions. And so we have a, a korero uh, with raki and Papatuanaku, that rather than sort of being conflict, um, Rangi wanted to acknowledge in order for the world to experience more life and potential, um, that he needed to be raised into the heavens uh, by uh, Tani and his brother Paya. And they have three po, uh, korua tipua, korua tawhito, and uh, potu tiraki. And so really like that's kind of our um, metaphor for that sort of transformation that um, and our sort of view of things, our practice, uh, um, we do, we think of the heavens as like being woven together like a tuku tuku panel. And, and that um, when we design, say, a system or a process or a practice, uh, everything gets bound together like the tuku tuku really tight. Uh, in order for us to uh, achieve change, uh, we need to unweave that tuku tuku panel, unlearn old ways of, of thinking and doing and then uh, lift the heavens up. And then once they're sort of set in place, we put those big toe and we then reweave uh, the tuku tuku panel with new ways of learning and uh, of uh, thinking and doing. And so that's really in terms of our mahi, uh, um, as an iwi, we've been engaged 25 years nearly uh, since post-settlement. Uh, um, but really when we look at those, bigger issues that impact our people, we acknowledge that, well, we need new tactics, new ways of thinking and doing. And our role as a, a social innovation lab uh, under an iwi is to kind of go, well, how do we uh, unweave the things that don't work for us that well? And how do we reweave new and better approaches? And so I always think a, a good chunk of our mahi is on undoing the things that aren't working for our people that are causing harm and sort of alleviating those things that are, are pushing our people down. Uh, but we also use those same kind of skills uh, in terms of how do we reweave new approaches, uh, new ideas, and, and new systems. And that's when we kind of get into our mana motuhake part. So I would say half of our stuff is kind of focused on loosely sort of equity, anti-racist systems change. And then another half of our uh, mahi is really just focusing on outside of Crown and our own iwi spaces to go, well, how do we create uh, new ways of thinking and doing that are just us and work for us uh, within our own community? And so a big part of, of our mahi is around uh, using our own culture and using our own mātaranga. So I think you talked uh, just a little bit around trust. Um, when really, um, as an iwi, we've experienced uh, uh, lots of approaches where, yeah, we are decision makers, we are decision takers that, you know, we've experienced uh, lots of consultation processes where we never really have a chance to influence. And so a big part of our mahi is creating our own sort of iwi-led spaces. Um, a bit noisy in the background, but we're in a big collaborative lab space uh, under the mana of our iwi. Um, so we literally have our own sort of innovation spaces, uh, partnership spaces, uh, spaces where we convene uh, uh, different parts of different sectors or systems or communities. Uh, we use our own processes. And so a big part for us, um, our papa, uh, Tatipine Oregon, <coughs> He always says, well, Ngaitahu has a, a traditional, he has a practice of rapid adaptation uh, um, that we've always adapted to new technologies. But the key point is that we always adapt new technologies to make us more us rather than to assimilate um, to be something else. 
And so when we think about our mahi, uh, we draw upon lots of international global ideas around complexity, around systems, around innovation. Um, but we kind of uh, develop our own approaches using our own cultural lens. And I'll show you a little bit about that maybe towards the end. Um, but yeah, basically, how do we use our own culture to unlock new ways of thinking and doing to really embrace alternative features? And one of the big um, tension points within our iwi leadership is even things like equity, like our people fear becoming sun-kissed uh, middle-class Pākehā, uh, that our goal is not to become middle-class Pākehā, our, our aspirations are, are to have mana motuhake, to be self-determining and determining our own future, our own destiny, and, and those are very different. And so we kind of have an interesting relationship with ideas like equity, <clears throat> where we align, but we kind of think about equity as a, a, a navigation marker towards our destination of mana motuhake, which is beyond equity and something more. So a big part of our, our work, as I said, is drawing upon international ideas. Uh, um, we're all open to stealing and borrowing uh, good ideas, but really how do we look at that kind of tupuna wisdom and create our own tools? And probably um, the other part we have is, I suppose, our own iwi-led spaces for innovation, our own iwi based processes, but most important is people and how do we grow uh, that next generation of rangatahi uh, um, leadership uh, so that they are able to facilitate that larger scale transformational change. So just some nuts and bolts stuff, because uh, I imagine that that can sound uh, very esoteric at times, but uh, we do lots of research. Uh, um, uh, Often uh, we do a mix of sort of things. We're working with data and blending that with whānau voice. Uh, we really try to identify what are the changes that will make the biggest difference. And uh, we use a range of techniques uh, uh, around that. Um, and we grow young ngaitahu uh, researchers and evaluators. Um, a big part of our mahi internally within our iwi is we run our own Futures Academy. Uh, so we grow that next generation of tribal leadership, uh, kind of train them in a whole bunch of innovation and research, uh, facilitation and collaborative strategies, tools and techniques. And in many ways, we think about that as running an apprenticeship and change where people talk about system, system change. How do we turn that into a practice? Uh, how do we turn that into a tikanga? Uh, um, that is yeah, embedded within our, our iwi. And so we think about it as a kawa, uh, a protocol for transformation, and um, we grow our young uh, emerging leaders in that practice um, because we know that's something that is going to be a critical skill, not just now and for the future. I have a, I have a dark sense of humour. So, um, you know, when you think about um, grand challenges, we always joke that it's a growing industry that we have no shortage of complex, multi-dimensional challenges, and um, really that uh, we need to grow the, the numbers of our leadership uh, that have the skills uh, um, and strategies to tackle that complexity and, and find a way through. And as I said, a big part of our mahi is uh, partnering, bringing those different partners together to design solutions, understand the problem better, and uh, we also do a lot of uh, capability building and uh, mainly within rangatahi and within our own iwi community. So um, our goal is to kind of make ourselves obsolete. We are, um, at the moment, we are, uh, I suppose you could say like a professional uh, consulting social enterprise and that we hire and train rangatahi and then they work on a range of projects uh, with partner organizations and within our own communities. But we also use that uh, to generate revenue uh, to be growing uh, rangatahi uh, change makers and future makers within our communities. And eventually uh, we'll get hopefully a critical mass where all of our hapu, whānau, iwi uh, can be leading the changes they want and not be dependent on any one, <clears throat> one outside of their own communities. Um, how did I get here? So I suppose I did... I don't know, maybe 10 
probably 15, 20 years. Uh, I don't want to add all of those up. Uh, um, but um, yeah, did a lot of program project uh, um, management and I suppose uh, always got frustrated with that when you sort of have that short term horizon. Um, I've heard even people in the public sector describe it as the Urupa of pilot projects, <laughs> you know, where um, you you end up working on initiatives that kind of have a three. And if you're amazing, maybe a five year run, but funding runs out. And so you always in that problematic, uh, sorry, programmatic approach, um, you always have that short term horizon. And I suppose what frustrated me was never really uh, dealing with root cause, but always dealing with symptoms and that short term horizon. And so um, probably about uh, not too long after the Canterbury earthquakes, I thought, oh, there's surely got to be a, a, a better approach. And so I uh, used to run around um, uh, the US a bit and look at uh, different approaches to collaboration and really sort of got clicked into social innovation. And so when we think about, you know, um, uh, systemic racism, say, like when we look at inequities, we, we're very uh, averse at uh, looking at understanding the problem and, and the causal factors. So we kind of have this problem blindness So we can all describe, you know, um, you know, racial inequities for Māori and we can list a whole bunch of negative statistics uh, for Māori, but we have a very um, poor understanding of well, what are the causal factors, what are the practices the policies and the ideas that create those negative uh, racial inequities. And when we when we have a problem blindness, we often uh, lead towards a programmatic intervention. So like a little, uh, um, you know, sort of uh, short term, bite size experimental initiative that never really addresses the root cause and never really uh, changes conditions. And really, uh, having worked in that space for 10, 15 years, I uh, thought, well, there's, that doesn't really work. We're not addressing root cause, we're uh, addressing symptoms. And so that idea of always, I think, um, uh, was it Bishop Desmond Tutu said, there's only so long you can be pulling people out of a river before you start to wonder who's upstream pushing them in. And really that was the kind of pivot point for me to go, well, how do we start to look at those upstream causes and start to engage there? And that also uh, is kind of a pretty good uh, reflection on where the iwi was at, where we had so little for so long. And um, once we settled, uh, we tried a whole bunch of largely, pro uh, sorry, not problematic, programmatic approaches, you know, scholarships, uh, um, things that were good and in intent, but uh, were never designed to actually address the root causes of the harms uh, that were impacting our communities. And so that's where we've started to go, well, we need to engage upstream. We need to address systemic issues in a systemic way. And, and really that's that uh, idea of transformation that we don't want to be the the Māori afterthought, uh, the, you know, the Awkward, it's consulted at the 80% complete mark of a project, or that we're putting band aids on things that we want to actually address the root cause and not only design systems uh, that are going to work within the state, but also in ways that we reduce the reliance of our, um, uh, of, um, our whanau on those services. So we don't want to become a service provider. We want Tafano to be in a position where uh, the state shouldn't need to intervene or have a presence, uh, much of a presence in their lives. And so that's where we want to aim to. And I think um, I heard once, um, you yeah, know, that just someone explained it, that program, uh, programmatic approaches are about helping people try to beat the odds and systemic interventions or systemic approaches are seeking to uh, change the odds permanently. And so that's something that we have an aspiration to drive as an iwi and something um, that in our role as a, a social innovation lab housed under the manner of an iwi, um, our role is to try and figure out that um, in a practical way through doing it uh, um, within our communities.
Um, I might just give you a little bit of an example. Um, so again, um, we work with a lot of rangatahi. Um, I'm definitely out of their age bracket. Uh, I, I did try the rangatahi adjacent for a good five years. Uh, I, I noticed out of the corner of my everyone just rolled their eyes. So um, I'm definitely out of the age bracket. Um, but uh, we work with a lot of rangatahi um, as, yeah, they're young professionals and uh, they are involved in a practice of system change, of social change uh, uh, within our iwi context. And um, just sharing something that they've been working on. So um, as I said, when we look at, and you mentioned that sort of relationships and trust, well, one of the big things I think in terms of that relationship dynamic is power. And for us that it's really important that when we use Western approaches to try and address broken Western systems that don't work for Māori communities, we end up kind of like recreating the problem, if that makes sense, uh, um, where we're not addressing the power dynamic. And so things like, in our experience, a co-design can be really, uh, 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 yeah, it's a good technique, but often um, it's used as a pseudonym for, um, you know, consultation. And that really, we, uh, from our Ewe's perspective, we didn't want an incremental innovation tool. We wanted a transformational uh, uh, tool and approach. And so Te Kore Koreka is our first go at developing a kawa for Māori future making, uh, uh, a ngaitau centric um, approach to innovation. And I'll just show you, here you go. Um, just as a practical example, uh, um, yeah, we looked at uh, a whole bunch of ideas uh, internationally, um, but uh, the kind of epiphany, the moment we had is, um, yeah, even when you try to explain systems, there aren't great systems for talking about systems and you can talk about icebergs and blind elephants and fish describing water. And we were one day working with a whole bunch of Māori and Pacifica and we had we were using the metaphor of an iceberg and that just seemed really stupid um, because none of us in our cultures really uh, had you know experienced icebergs and, and so um we started looking to our own culture and that's when um, things got a lot easier for us and things really quick and so just in terms of our approach um in, in terms of innovation we draw upon our creation traditions which has this sort of cyclical approach of, you know, starting in Te Aotearoa, that current state, uh, moving into Te Kore, like the world, kind of the world of formlessness. Uh, um, that it's kind of like looking back into the past, um, moving through that realm of Te Kore into the world of poor and darkness and potential. And then you emerge back uh, through to Te Aotearoa, to the world of new potential. And so when we looked at our traditions, uh, we never, our people experience loss or calamity or um, yeah, sort of huge challenges, you would see these same patterns uh, come through our creation traditions, come through our waiata, and even um, grief. You know, when uh, someone yeah, experienced the loss of a spouse, then their waiata tangi, their moteatea, their laments would talk about going off into the under the into the world of Tikore, um, lying beneath the mountains to seek enlightenment and understanding. And through that journey through to Paul and the underworld, they come back with new understandings, new ideas, and new insights. And so we've been working through well, how do we translate that into uh, a practical process for transformation and innovation? And Katio uh, Ikone. Um, but that's an example of our work in terms of indigenous approach, kind of addresses what we've found is that having our own co-op innovation helps us address those relationship and power dynamics because it's our cultural framing that uh, shapes the journey and the arc we go on together with both our own people and with Tangata Tiriti. And um, just encourage that uh, tekorekoreka.co.nz is a new website that our team, our rangata here have developed and are sharing that kawa uh, for transformation with the world as sort of a koha back 
to what we have learned uh, from outside of our own spaces. So kāti aui kōnei, uh, tanoi te pahu pahu. Um, but really just thinking uh, uh, about that, um, another bit of a, a wero or, um, for our hiningaro. But as I said, um, we've all experienced um, uh, um, when we look at uh, iwi lead, when we look at mataranga lead, when we look at te lead, lead, uh, when we acknowledge that we don't have the same starting point, uh, how can we privilege, well, how can privileging Indigenous ways of knowing and doing amplify the potential for transformational change, for systemic change? And really to go, well, that's kind of the, the new untested territory. Uh, um, that's the space that we are most interested in. And uh, really just as a bit of a whittle to go, well, um, how can we be elevating and amplifying the mana of mātaranga Māori and innovation? rather than taking kind of more of a technical Western approach. And our belief is that, well, that uh, amplifies and opens up new opportunities uh, for transformational change. So, yeah, kōrā te, te wero kia koutou. Looking forward to hearing some of the um, kōrero and some of the challenges or some of the things that you spoke about within your breakout rooms. Um, with saying that, I'm going to put myself on mute and leave the floor open. So if anyone would like to share some of the pakaro or some of the things that came up within your breakout room, or maybe you're sitting for some um, burning partai, uh, we need that while this is a time. So floor is open um, for the sharing. Um, kia ora koutou. I'll happily go if that's all right. I just know I was going to step in at this point. Um, we had a fantastic um, com conversation and it ranged from um, it all being about people through to um, the constitutional settings of Aotearoa New Zealand. Um, and um, sometimes it's just really invigorating to hear again, you know, some common um, reflection, shall we say, on what's what's really at core and hearing the, the language of government changing from um, whānau-led, um, regionally supported, centrally enabled, back to sort of more of a national-led through to, well, I can't, I won't paraphrase in the way we did in the room, but um, it, it was um, locally taking um, kind of approach and the need for um, all in the public service system to have the capability and the capacity um, to actually hold uh, relationships that work better together for outcomes and to step back from that power that we were talking about and enabling um, power to be led um, within a consistent national direction. Um, but but that doesn't mean it's the same everywhere. So yeah, I think, I don't know, other than that's a fair reflection. Sounds amazing, Fire. Thank you for your koha and sharing um, with us and giving us a bit of insight, some of the rich korero that was happening within your ropu. And you reminded me, um, this is what I love about our team being able to hold this space with all of you, is that you're being able to find like minded people or allies that are searching for that well being or that equity and are also grappling with many different complexities. So bringing us all together in a safe space and do this and have that kōrero instead of skimming across the surface or business as usual, just to they or to pause, stop and just um, delve into that wānanga even just for a very short time and start unpacking the complexities of it. So stepping back to our question, again, our question was how can privileging 
indigenous ways of knowing and doing amplifies systems change. I love the simplicity of the question, but what Bike have picked up there, there's so many multiple layers that you need to delve through or go through to unpack to come up with some multiple solutions or even thinking that you're doing. So therefore, again, um, I'm going to open up the floor for anyone else that would like to add on to the beautiful koha that has come so far. Um, but also we have our chat. Please feel free if you want to add your whakaro into the chat because our team can see it, even edu, as well as any part I will we have them with us. So kia ora rei te whanau, going on mute and opening up our floor. Oh, just the total call the co papa too. Then, um, oh yeah, I, the question is really cool. And what it really reminded me of that first part of the question when it talks about how can privileging indigenous ways of knowing and doing. Um, what I'm reminded of is that when I look at Article One of the Tiriti of Waitangi, and as a Kawana Tanga myself, um, it's the obligation that sits with Article One for all that's been granted to the Crown in terms of the right to govern legislate and pass laws um, and lead the country in a particular way. The obligation that goes with that is that the key for Kawanatanga for the Crown is our obligation to protect the rights and interests of iwi Māori. And that's been forgotten or lost. But what's really neat is when I see the articles, well, articles one, two, and three, now being made a compliant requirement within Crown agencies because of our, our Act changes that we've had. When I look at that first part of the statement, from that Article 1 perspective, it's not that we're privileging Indigenous ways of knowing and doing. What we're having to do is make um, our tiriti context or te ao māori, te ao at the centre core of our existence as a um, Article 1 kawanatanga. And then what that results in is the need to then scaffold around it the institutional um, Pakiatanga system structure process. And bearing in mind, the Pākehā Tanga is a one-dimensional construct. The challenge we have from coming from a Te Ao Māori and Te Ao Marama context, uh, Te Ao Marama being a realm space, that being the essence of a way of seeing, being, and actualising in terms of Māori view from prior to colonisation, that's a four-dimensional realm space. And so the challenge that we have is that our Kawana Tanga system is never actually designed with the ability to know how to understand, negotiate or navigate that realm space. And that's and that's actually what's kind of partially has resulted in the breaches of um, Article 1 of the treaty. But one of the things that's tabled in our group was what would if what would the treaty context be today if Article 1 wasn't breached? If Article 1 was honoured? Um, what, what would be the context or state of play today? And I would I would go to so far as to say that an indigenous capability, a working between and within Te Ao Pākehā, Te Ao Māori and Te Ao Marama would actually amplify, it wouldn't be amplifying systems to change, it would be that change. But the, the impact that we would as a country then potentially have on the rest of the world is quite huge because I mean, it already is in the fact that we're the only country in the Western world that has a treaty, legislative treaty obligation um, to give effect to with our Indigenous peoples. No other country has that. And, and from Stats New Zealand, it's been interesting the impact, the potential impact of that on the world stage in terms of how we work with other national statistics officers who are struggling to understand how do you apply an indigenous context to data statistics and insights and evidence base. We, we get to do that in Aotearoa, um, but only because of we've had an act change last year that requires that. So yeah, I, in answer to that question, I think in terms of that system change, which hasn't been achieved yet, but the huge potential for the whole country that would come from being able to do that um, actually reflects 
a mutuality context of the Tiriti of Waitangi. So I, I think it's really cool and it's exciting from this point on uh, what could be possible in terms of that space. And especially with groups like this, where we are able to have those sorts of tala noa kōrero conversations to, to unpack and challenge our, our own things that we're doing in that space too. So yeah, kia ora. Kia ora matua, Sammy. Thank you again for your comment and everything that you shared with us today. Um, beautiful what you've added into our kite kōrero at this moment. I want to also acknowledge at this time, um, ngā mihi kia koe matua ben, and thank you for popping into chat. Um, all the some of the highlights or some of the thoughts that came out of um, your ropu and your group. Um, when I'm reading these comments, I'm thinking of what um, Edu shared with us. Are we being decision makers or decision takers? Therefore, when I'm reading all your different comments, I'm seeing like what Edu has done there with his work when you're sitting um, from the iwi seat and leading forward towards systems change. Like again, what you put in there, what happens when you start with these communities, when you sit with them and you ask them what is right at every stage, it's looking at us within the public sector and within the system, how we're allowing these voices to come through where they truly are being decision makers within the process and allowing that relationship to come through. So Kete Mihi and thank you for those koha and the ropu that was with them. Have we got anyone else that would like to call her out and share with the Fano some of their thoughts and thinking, or even to respond to some of the quoted or, or comments that have come um, come out so far? Because the main thing is, in a give or take, it's about us to have that talanoa or that sharing of quoted of Picardo together and bring it to life with um, sharing today in the space. Uh, may I, Donna? Cool. Um, I just wanted to say a big um, ngamahi kia koe to um, Eduera for a good provocation um, this morning for me. I'm actually running a session this afternoon um, that involves talking about stuff like the iceberg models, and that made me sort of really rethink um, <laughs> what it is that I should do this afternoon. Um, I'm very conscious of, yeah, in terms of what it is that I was going to be looking at discussing with the group this afternoon that it's coming from a very Western and Eurocentric lens anyway, but I just thought that was a, um, yeah, really appreciate this year and just the reframing of that um, under two hours and yeah, has given me something that I need to now seriously go away and think about in the next couple of hours um, <laughs> before I get into mine. So, ngamihi kia koe. Oh, tēnā koe hoa um sharing um, with us. Um, I'm going to open up for one more kai kōrero. Is there anyone else that would like to call her any thoughts, any burning pātai, even just to me out and add to our kaupapa and our kōrero together? Kia ora, Donna. Um, kia ora, Koto. Um, namihikia Koto. Namihikia. Um, the organisers of this um, hui, which I have just uh, gate crashed because I saw my a colleague of mine participating, and I thought, "Ooh, that looked too good to miss." Um, we had a kind of intimate. It was quite sweet conversation with um, two colleagues, one from the far north and one from in who works in social services, and the other with DPMC, and it. It was um, myself. I work at Oruma Tamariki, and and it was interesting in terms of, you know, the acknowledgement that there is more space and uh, to have these conversations. However, that has come only when our noses have been really pushed to the ground in terms of recognizing our failures vis-a-vis um, -vis Maori and and particularly when it comes to Oranga Tamariki and really being asked to do things differently and then having a leader, having the leadership that prioritizes doing things differently and actually allowing for the time to have those kind of puraku conversations, which give value to an alternative way of looking at the world and addressing problems. And why, I guess the question is, why does it have to be, why do we have to get to that to that disaster point before, or that crisis point before creating the space to have these conversations. And I guess my 
challenge is, I mean, we're very lucky at Oranga Tamariki, but it's only come at the cost of um, of of failure on, on behalf of the ministry vis-a-vis -vis Maori for decades in terms of having enshrined in our 7AA legislation a commitment to listening to iwi a Maori to, to influence yeah. how we do things, whereas not all government agencies, crown agencies have that um, uh, um, explicit responsibility. Mm -hmm. But it, all, it only came at the cost of a real painful process for a lot of people to get to that point. And so how is it we can be more progressive in creating, in privileging the space to have these conversations and the voices to have those conversations? Kia ora. Oh, kia ora, Karen, and thank you, Theron, for throwing out that beautiful whittle to our whānau here, which is I think a, a really good place to throw this whittle and add on to our ground for the rest of our whānau sitting here, which is a big question of how, answering how can we do that. Again, what Bai Karen picked up there, which is a really good point, and I don't think it sits isolated within her space as well, is why do we have to wait until our noses hit the ground where there's complete failure, hit complete failures before we start um, making change there. It's a nice note at this point to point out again which you pointed out there where there's a lot of losers or a lot of people hurt in the process which unfortunately are a whānau in our communities so therefore I'm wondering if with that challenge being laid out there if some people have any thoughts or any responses to that. Or even there, good point. Oh, sorry. If that person could jump back in, my, my apologies. I'm sorry for cutting that person off. Um, what I might do actually is turn that um, rako and back to Edu. What are your thoughts in terms of what Bai Kieran put out there? Um, it was really interesting living through the Canterbury earthquakes and um, seeing uh, yeah, an external driver of change that was very rapid. Um, but also, you know, probably in the years afterwards, we talked a lot about system snapback, which was that you had an external driver of change that was kind of immediate and forced, but then it, it, yeah, it forced people to adopt new ways of thinking and doing, but then um, it just really subtly snapped back to the old way and was quite frustrating. And I think um, when you think of even COVID, you think of, you know, all those sorts of approaches of build back better, you know, um, that never kind of eventuated. One of the challenges is when you have uh, an external driver of change um, it kind of always seems to be superficial uh, um, that you have a veneer of change and maybe you have to do things differently, but those, you know, those mental models, those ways of thinking are still there and eventually they kind of reassert and resurface. So um, I suppose, yeah, our guesstimation is, is that, you know, that when we affect change from within, it's harder more complicated, uh, takes longer, um, but ultimately is going to be more sustainable because, uh, um, you know, that we kind of have that chain of, you know, new ways of thinking, new ways of organizing and structuring and new ways of, of doing and eventually measuring. So we often talk about kawa, tikanga, ritinga and putaka. And that color is kind of like the values, your principles, you know, the stories we tell. Um, uh, tikanga often like, and that's kind of, sorry, color is in a, like a societal uh, um, sort of mental model level. Uh, uh, tikanga as a sort of institutional, structural strategy, resource flows, all that sort of stuff. Um, ritinga is sort of like the individual practice, competencies, behaviors. And then uh, 
uh, putting I like the measurable outcomes, both in terms of data and evaluation. So I think it was Ben Briggs talked about the iceberg. Well, that's kind of how we approach it. And that in our sort of thinking is that in order for change to be sustainable and transformational, you kind of need multiple approach uh, interventions at multiple layers within an organization. And we can all probably describe what uh, an effective change looks like, um, you know, the old corporate restructure where you shift everyone around an organization chart, but nothing really changes. Um, you know, a structural intervention without one that really challenges the stories, the, you know, the ideas that support it. And it kind of comes back to our thinking of, you know, that in order for there to be inequities, there must be practices support those inequities, policies that support and protect those practices, and ultimately ideas and assumptions which underpin those policies and practices. So it's kind of thinking of a causal chain. Like if we want to transform things, we've got to map what are, what's causing the problem at the moment, and then design uh, an approach that kind of works its way through those layers and weaves them all together. And that's our guesstimation is that's how uh, you achieve the best chances at achieving, um, you know, sustainable change. Yeah, and that transformational change as opposed to superficial. What a beautiful, eloquent um, reply. Um, kia ora ra, um, ere for answering today. And I've got to be honest, I love it. I've got a new kupuho or a brand new word for me today that I can take away, which is that guesstimation. I love it. Um, kia ora te whanau. Um, what always happens in these um, sessions with a beautiful, rich um, sharing, it feels like I've blinked and um, with that we've come to the end of our session or nearing the end of our session and it's over just because the um, sharing has been so awesome. Um, so therefore whanau, what happens is um, we're going to wrap it up now, but before I do, um, I te tūngāne, I te mauka, whakahi o auraki, auraki, kei te tūwohu ki a koe. Um, thank you so much for your sharing today and also the provocations that you put out to our whānau here in Practice Foundations. And something I would love to reiterate before our whānau leave us today to contemplate over within the work they do. Um, your sharing of how do we unweave the tuku tuku panel of what doesn't work and causes harm and reweave into ways of thinking and doing to new ways of doing? And how can we use equity as a navigation marker towards mana motu hake, by paving the way for our rangatahi who are our aapopo, our tomorrow and our future? So nā reira e te uh, tuki mata ki koha kei te mihi atu ki a koe e eru. And thank you for sharing iwi led systems change to address systemic change to change things permanently. Um, ka kore te puna mihi e uh, mimiti ki a koe hua. And of course, to you, the whānau, our Practice Foundations whānau, thank you once again um, 